Masking is a crucial skill for any digital design program. It's a non-destructive way to remove parts of an image and add them back in later if you want to. Today we'll review the basics of how to use masks in Infinity Photo. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're gonna to talk about how to create masks in Affinity Photo. So I'm gonna assume you don't have any experience with masks and I'm gonna to try to show their benefits and how to use them. Now I have this image here and before we look at masks, let's look at maybe the current way you do things. So what if we wanted to delete the background from this car? Well, I could use my selection brush over here and maybe I'd select whatever is the background. I can hold Alt to toggle back and forth and refine my selection. So I made a selection of the area I want to delete and I can select my eraser brush now. And I can make my brush nice and big, and I can start erasing things I don't want in my image. And we get rid of all of it. So I'll hit Control D to undo the selection. And you can see I still have one image here, and I erased my background. But if we go and we zoom into the areas here, you can see I didn't quite erase very well. There's lots of gaps here. Down here, a whole section is missing. Over here, I forgot to erase some stuff, but it's fixable. So we can just say, all right, let's just use our eraser some more and I accidentally took out too much of the wheel. So I just undo it and I'll just have to keep redoing it again until I get it perfectly. Even that's not too great, but I don't wanna risk erasing part of my wheel. So you can see we kinda of have a problem here and that is that once I deleted parts of my image, there's not really a way to get back to it. I can undo forever, but that's definitely not an efficient way to work. So I've restored my original image here and let's look at how to do that with a mask instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my selection brush again and let's select the car. And now with my car selected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask and I'm gonna do that by pressing this button here which says mask layer. So let's press it. And now you can see my car is isolated from the background. I'll undo my selection. And if I expand my layer here in the layer stack, you can see that my mask is here. And we'll look more closely at this in a bit. So don't worry if it doesn't make sense. So let's zoom into the car. And you can see we have a lot of the same problems that we had before. We took out too much here, too much there. We have some selections that aren't really done well. But the key thing about masking is that we didn't actually delete our data because what happens is if I turn off the mask, you can see all my information is still there. My background image is still completely intact. So I'll turn the mask back on. Now what I'll do is that I can alt click on my mask and you can see what it looks like. And what this is telling us is that black areas are being completely hidden and white areas are being completely revealed. And that's the way masks work in general. But if I toggle this back to the image, look at the black areas, you'll see they're transparent and the white areas have our car. So I'm alt clicking on the mask here so it can go back and forth. Now the really cool thing is that with our mask selected, I can select a paintbrush and I can paint on the mask. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint white and watch what happens over here. I'm painting the headlight back in. Let me undo that. I'll go back to my mask here. My mask had a black area there. If I paint white over it, this is what I was doing before. The headlight is there again. So when we paint white on a mask, it reveals the things beneath it. I can go and I can fill in this area. And the really nice thing is that if I fill in too much, I can go back and I can erase it with the color black. So I can kind of fine tune this even more. So I can always go back and forth between adding and erasing to get something more precise. Now, one thing here is that my brush is very solid. It's a one of the hard round brushes. I can actually make a soft brush too and do the same thing so that I get a gentler edge here. So I can gradually add in some of that white and I can erase with my black. And I can fix an area up here. I can paint it back in with white and I can overpaint a little bit and then I can erase with black again. Now, when you first start working with masks, it seems a little awkward because you don't really know where you're painting. You kind of want to see this type of view all the time, but as you become more comfortable with the process, you start to get a better feel for using them. And eventually you don't even really use this view much anymore, but it's still useful to check out from time to time. Now you saw as I was going back and forth, I was kind of using black to paint out something. And then maybe if I did too much, I would use, I'd select white to go back in. There's actually an easier way to go back and forth like that. So let me make one of these colors black and the other white. If you press Shift X, you can toggle back and forth between which of these you're doing. So if you're going back and forth between erasing and adding in a mask, this is a really easy way to toggle quickly back and forth. So I can Shift X, add back in, Shift X. Now I'm doing my black again. And when you hover the cursor over part of your image, you see a preview of what it's gonna do. So right now I can see that I must have black selected because I see a little bit of the eraser there. If I Shift X, now it's white, now you see there's nothing there. If I go over my mask area, you can see this is showing me what it would do if I added it in. Now one trick I like to do when I'm masking is to add my own color backgrounds to an image because that helps me see what's going on more. Let me give an example. Let me turn off this background. Let me add a pixel layer. So let me drag this pixel layer to the bottom 
and I'll fill it with green. Then I'll go and I'll turn my car back on. And the thing I like about this is I can kind of see some more of the mistakes. For example, here's a problem. Let me go back to my mask. Make sure I select this as white. And I can go and I can paint it back in. And of course, if at any time you want to remember what your original image looks like, you can toggle the mask on and off. So let me do that here. And here I can see there's a part that I didn't notice before. So this should be painted back in. And this is a good example of overpainting and then switching and cleaning up with the black mode to erase. Now one thing you can also do is invert a mask. So maybe I wanted the background instead of the car. So with my mask selected, I can go to layer invert and you can see it did the opposite. Let me hide the pixel layer there. So this is our background. So if you wanna see what that looks like, I'll alt click on the mask and you can see it turned the part of the car black and the background white, but I'll revert that back to what it was before. Now the mask is a child of this image, but it can also be a standalone layer. So I can take this mask and I can just drag it out here. And you can see what it's doing is it's also blocking out the green level below it. If I was to do something like draw a rectangle, if I put it under the mask, the mask is blocking out that part of the rectangle also. But I'm not really a fan of that. So what I'll do is I'll take the mask and I'll drag it back to the object there. You can also use shapes to create masks. So I'll select a rectangle over here and I'll draw a rectangle around my car. Not my car, but a car. And I'll select the color to white. And what I can do now is I can right click on that rectangle and I can say mask to below. And you can see it masked in that shape. And the cool thing about this is that I can actually change it dynamically. I can move it around. And of course, if I don't like it, I can delete it. The shape doesn't have to be a rectangle. We can do something like an ellipse. So I'll do this mask to below. And we have an ellipse. Now it is an ellipse right now. So if you wanted to paint on it, well, I would undo this. What you could do is you could say rasterize to mask. So I'll do that. And now I can actually paint on it and refine my mask. So let's say I want to add part of it back in. I could start doing things like this. And this would add to our mask. So our mask now looks like that. And I can always drag it into my object if I had more stuff going on and I wanted to isolate the effect more. Now, one of the coolest things about masks is using them with gradients. So I'll add a mask to my car here and I'll select the gradient tool and I can just click and drag. And what you see is I get a varying level of transparency here. So the white part is totally solid. And as it goes down to the black, it becomes increasingly transparent. And if we look at the mask, we see this is why that happens. I can do other types of gradients. I can do radial. Kind of go like that. That's kind of cool because it gives it kind of like a faded effect towards the edges and you could put another background in there. So let me do that. So I added kind of a starry background there and you can see that the radial gradient is causing my image to fade at the edges. Now you can also use masks for adjustment layers. I have an entire video on adjustment layers. So if you want to know how they all work, check out that video. I won't go into too much detail here, but let's just look at a simple adjustment layer, which is hue, saturation and lightness. So I'll click this adjustments here and I'll select HSL. And let's say I wanna make this car a different color. So I can select the yellow part of it and I can rotate it around. Let's make it that pink color. That looks pretty different. So I'll close this. Now one problem is that this affected all the yellow in my layer. So for example, the yellow in the grass also turned pink. Well, by default, an adjustment layer is a type of mask. So what I can do is I can select a brush, go to my black, let's zoom in here, and I can start painting out of it. And you can see here that there's a mask. If I alt click on it, that's what I'm doing here. I can get a softer brush, do some more fine detail. There are definitely better ways to refine edges, but I'm just giving you some high level examples in this video. And I could do the same thing over here. I could fix all this grass again. And now you can see the grass is back to its original color because I used the adjustment layer as a mask. Now, while this works fine, I actually prefer to create a manual mask for my adjustment layers. I find it just gives me a little more options that way. So I'll undo this. So I got rid of my mask for my adjustment layer. What I'll do now is I'll just manually create a standalone mask for it. So I can click mask layer. And now what happens is I can actually expand it and you can see it a little more clearly here. And it's a little more easy to toggle on and off. So I'll go back and I'll mask out the grass. So this is my new adjustment layer with the manual mask I added to it. And I can easily toggle this on and off to see what I've done. So I do prefer manually creating a mask for adjustment layers, even though the adjustment layer itself is a mask. Now I recently made a video about all the adjustment layers in the Infinity programs. And one of the questions I got in the comments was, can you mask a blend layer? And the answer is yes, you can mask a blend layer just like you can mask any other layer. So let's look at an example here. I'll add a new pixel layer and let's fill it with gray. And let's set this to the saturation blend mode. So it's kind of towards the bottom. 
there. Now let's say I wanted the car to not have this effect. Well, what I could do is I could add a mask to my layer and this mask is added to the pixel blend layer. So this layer is set to saturation, it's gray, so it's making the whole image gray. I'll select my car. And now with my car selected, what I can do is I can select a brush, set it to black, and I can just start painting out that mask for the blend layer. So my blend layer was desaturating my image, but then I added a mask to block out part of that blend layer so that now the yellow below is shining through. So that's really all you have to do to mask a blend layer. I played fast and loose with the selection brush in this video, but if you wanna learn more on how to use it, check out my video on the selection brush. And of course, if you have any questions on masking, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.